Have you ever got really frustrated that you haven't got a mark in a question and you just don't understand why? Well, in this video, we're going to go through some exam past paper questions and look at where students go wrong. So come mark students wrong answers with me. The first one we're going to mark is this question here. It seems relatively straightforward and the kind of question people would think, oh yeah, I'll get two out of two marks on this quite easily. The question is asked after the braking distance of a car increasing as the speed increases, it says give two other factors that increase the braking distance of the car. However, both of these answers this person had put, while they might seem correct, are actually wrong. They're not going to get you marks for this question. And the reason is for this word in bold here. The question says two factors, which this would be fine, but it says two factors that increase the braking distance of a car. If it just said the factors that affect it, this will be fine. But because they say to increase it, you've got to give things that actually would increase the braking distance. So instead of weather, you'd say something like icy or poor um, weather conditions, because if you had those conditions, it would increase the braking distance. Next one is the mass of the car. And again, it's the right idea, it's a factor, but to increase the braking distance, that would happen with a heavier car. So you'd say an increased um, mass of the car, um, which would be the thing that actually makes the braking distance far, uh, further in this case. Let's have a look at the question down below. So why does the person's reaction time affect the thinking distance of the car? The person says um, the person will take longer to react, so will travel further as they have a faster reaction time. Now, number one, you might have seen it in videos previously, never ever say a time is faster or slower, okay? You've got to say either it's increased or decreased. But luckily, earlier in the answer, they have said it takes longer to react. So that would be longer implies it's a higher time, so that would be one mark for this question. It is an explained question, and they haven't explained what the link is between time and distance. Now, if you look on your equation sheet, you'll find there is an equation for this, um, which is to say that distance is equal to speed times by time. And if you can quote that equation with a little bit of reasoning, so you'd say, um, so distance um, is proportional to time, um, and you could say a constant speed, it's not necessary for this answer, uh, then that's how you get the second mark for linking those two together and explaining it. This question is all about terminal velocity, and it's really important you know how to explain how an object reaches terminal velocity. In this question, the person has made a good attempt at talking about each of these two questions, but unfortunately would get basically zero marks on either of them because they haven't been specific enough or clear enough with their language. So the first question is all about a hailstone and now why does it accelerate? Um, it says why does it accelerate, so it's an explain question. This person has essentially described what acceleration is and um, says it's getting faster. Now, while that is true, it's not an explanation answer for this question. In terms of why it's getting faster, let's talk about the forces acting on it. We've got the weight going downwards and there's going to be a force going upwards, um, which is air resistance, but it's not going to be anywhere near as big as the weight going downwards. So we'd say something like this question, uh, we'd say that weight or gravity um, is bigger than air resistance or drag. Um, you could say there is a resultant force downwards, anything like that would be fine for the mark. This next one is all about how it reaches terminal velocity. So eventually it does stop accelerating and it reaches a constant speed. So this person said when all the forces become equal, the stone is accelerating at a constant speed. Now they've come kind of close to getting the mark for forces. Uh, they've obviously shown they know it's a question about forces. Let's go back to this diagram. We've got air resistance going upwards and we've got weight going downwards. Um, now instead of saying they become equal, the way you describe it for a GCSE question um, is that you'd say the forces become balanced. Okay, so um, that's the second mark. Let's do the first mark in this question first. Uh, it says that as the velocity increases, so as it gets faster, you've got to talk about what happens to the air resistance. Okay, so as velocity increases, and that's when the air resistance also increases. So as it travels faster, you're going to get a greater air resistance acting on it because it's collided with more air particles per second. Then we say uh, when the weight um, is balanced by or balanced with um, the air resistance, then we say instead of a constant speed, which is absolutely correct, but you kind of assume you know that that's what terminal velocity means, uh, we'd say there's no resultant force or zero um, resultant force acts overall. Don't forget resultant force just means the difference between these two forces. So if they're equal, you subtract them, it's going to be zero. And that's how you get your three marks for this question. Let's have a look at this graph question here. So the student has drawn a line of best fit for the results and they've done the points correctly, which is really good. So they've got all mark there for um, plotting the points. They've drawn a line of best fit. However, the line of best fit is a bit too low. What they've tried to do, I think, is try and go through or as close to as many points as possible, but they've left these three quite far off the line. So the rule for lines of best fit is, um, even if it's a straight or a curved line, 
you should have equal points above as there are below or as close as you can get to that. So in this case, they've got one, two, three. We've also got this one here, four, quite significantly above. They've barely got any below, possibly this one's slightly below. This would not be a correct line of best fit. Now, more importantly, they've lost that mark. They've also not done this little bit here, which is labeling the axes, which is going to be one of the easier marks you get in the paper because you've just got to copy what's in the table to um, what's on each axis. So in here, it says the height of the ramp. We can see 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, etc. Um, so height of ramp and just copy it. Don't um, abbreviate it. It's not worth risking a mark just for uh, not copying something properly. So height of ramp in meters. And we've got up here to the left, we've got acceleration. Uh, in meters per second squared. That should be the easiest mark you get in the whole paper. Just don't miss it. Make sure you go through each of these bullet points if you get a question like this and sort of tick them off as you go. For this next question, this student has had an absolute mare. They definitely haven't been taught or haven't practiced how to set out equation questions properly because they've done what a lot of students usually do, which is just do the big number divided by the small number um, and haven't actually looked at what equation to use and haven't actually like thought about how to get marks. So in this question, because they've just done the wrong thing divided by the wrong thing, um, it's going to be zero marks for this question. It's quite an easy one to mark. Let's show, look at how you do it properly. So in this question, first of all, we've got kilometers. So we need to convert that into meters first of all. So that's 1,500 meters. And the correct equation to use um, is the distance equals speed times time. Now, I'm a big, big, big fan of not trying to rearrange it first of all, but putting your numbers in and then making sure you know how to do it from there. So a method like FIFA, where F is for formula, I is for insert values. I know the distance is 1,500, speed is 20, the time I don't know, so I can leave it as an X or a T or whatever I want to do and find it later. Next, what I need to do is fine tune, so that means like do any rearranging. So I'm trying to find what T is. I need to get rid of this times by 20, so I divide by 20 from both sides, and that gives me A, my final answer, which is that divided by that is 75 seconds, which is what you get for full marks in this question. Another calculation question here where the students put down the correct formula but they haven't got marks for this question even though I think they tried to do the right thing in the end. So for this question we've got uh, acceleration and resultant force. We're trying to find the mass of the trolley so we've got to use this equation here. Now initially I can see that they've actually they've crossed out some incorrect working which was to do the acceleration divided by the force. Then what I think they've done um, is to do the force divided by the acceleration. So what they should do um, is do um, so F equals M times A. Then we've got force 0.63 equals M times by 2.1. Then you can see we've got to do 0.63 divided by 2.1, uh, which is going to be equal to uh, 0.3. However, because they have no valid workings and they've just messed up a simple decimal place, maybe they did divide by 21 instead of 2.1, because they've messed up and they haven't got any valid workings, I cannot give them any marks for this question. If I'd done all this, if they'd done all this and they'd messed up at the end, they'd just done a decimal place in the wrong spot, that would still get two out of three for this question. So even if you're like rushing at the end or maybe you just think, oh, that's fine, I know the right answer now, make sure you put a valid working in here um, so that you can get the sympathy marks if you mess up at the end, because these things can happen. This Transformers question, the person has actually got the right answer correct. However, just the lesson for when you get to questions um, that you're running out of space for is really not a good idea. If you've had to make loads of crossings out, don't try and squeeze it all in here. So number one, you shouldn't write outside this line here. It does mention it on the line. You should keep everything within those lines because the photocopying is unlikely to include this. So anything you write outside those lines might not get included. Also, if you are rushing and trying to like squeeze stuff in a certain space, um, this person's got his answer right and they've got one step of correct workings. However, they haven't got the second correct um, step of workings. Um, so if they get this final answer wrong, they're unlikely to get all, of, um, all the working marks here because they haven't got enough valid workings to cross through answers, which the marker is not going to um, get in this case. So they actually, in this case, if they um, haven't got this second marker working is they're unlikely to get full marks uh, which obviously you don't want to do so what you should do is in your question let's say you go to here write a little star say use um, extra space and then you go to the back and you make sure on the back page or the back few pages you write down the question number so 7.2 and then you just carry on with your answer there um, it will always get marked I promise you there's someone looking through to check every paper that's got those sort of answers at the back
This question is quite a tricky one. It's quite poorly answered on the year it came out. However, there's lots of clues in the question that can help us answer it more effectively. The question says, explain why a radiographer stands behind a protective screen when taking an x-ray and the information they give you is how different dose of um, radiation affects the body. Obviously, inc increasing risk of cancer and then death. And it says, during an x-ray, a person receives a dose of 0.5 and they may take many x-ray images a day. This person, a uh, student, has said, the person stands behind a screen so they're protected, they can be shielded from the x-rays, and be safe while they do their work. Now, that's not going to be any marks to this question, unfortunately. None of it's incorrect. However, it is not a detailed enough explanation for why they bother standing behind the screen. It's kind of just the obvious stuff in this question. And also, they've got quite big handwriting, and they've just done like sort of one sentence. They filled the end of the space and thought, well, that's enough. It's another argument behind try and use bullet points for two, three, four, five, six mark questions because um, it helps you figure out, well, if I'm writing a mark scheme for this, what are three different things I can say so I don't need to just waffle? So this person's done exactly that. So you'd say the screen will absorb some of the x-rays, um, essentially block them. Um, and what that does it actually reduces this person's dose. If you imagine someone standing behind the screen uh, when the x-ray is happening, um, they're going to get much less dose if some of the x-rays are being absorbed by this screen. And that's what this question is all about. Look at the table. So when it says they reduces the person's dose, that then reduces their risk. That's the easy mark here because we can see if you've got less dose, you have a much less risk of cancer or of death overall. Um, so that would be perfect three mark answer uh, for this question. In a question like this where you've got a multi-step equation, some students can be tempted just to try and use one equation um, and stop trying to con the examiner into thinking they've done something correct. So some, when you mark your answers, be really harsh with yourself. This person is not getting any marks for this question, unfortunately. The reason is they've wrote down distance equals speed times time, which is a correct equation to use, but they've used it incorrectly. What they've used as the speed is actually the deceleration. So they've not used it correctly at all. I can't give any marks um, for using the right equation because they've used it in the wrong way. So what my top tip for multi-step equations would be, um, so when you have multi-step uh, questions, meaning you have five or six marks, it's two equations at least to be able to use, um, just work something out. You don't need to work out the final answer because usually that's gonna be quite a tricky thing that involves two different equations. So if you work something out correctly, um, then you can usually use that to find the final answer, plus you get two or three marks for this question. So what we're going to do first of all um, is actually use this same equation. Uh, so for this question we would do distance equals speed times time, um, but this time we're going to use that to work out the speed the car is traveling at initially. So it says um, the speed is, um, so speed we don't know, so I'm just going to write V for speed here. Time we do know, so it's 0 0.7 seconds apart, and for this section it says the car traveled 14 meters between the two images being taken. So therefore it allows us to work out the speed, which is going to be equal to 14 divided by 0 0.7, which is equal to 20 meters per second. Now, you might think that we've gone backwards there, we've got speed, we're trying to find distance. However, for that bit of the question, we've got three out of our six marks already because we just worked something out correctly using the values we've been given. Now for the next bit, um, we're going to have to work out what the actual braking distance is. So now we've got an extra value, we worked out the speed, um, now this is going to be our initial speed, so as the car is slowing to a halt, this is their initial speed they're travelling at, they're going to be slowing down after that to get to a final velocity of zero. So once we know that, and we've got the deceleration already, uh, we can actually use this equation here, so it's the V squared minus U squared equals 2AS equation, and try and work out the distance from there. So we've got 0 squared minus 20 squared equals 2 times by this, um, which is negative 6.25, uh, times by the distance, which is 14. Um, sorry, distance, which we don't know. Um, so I'm going to leave that as an S. Um, and to do a little bit of rearranging, so we've got um, 400 minus 400 on the left-hand side, and we've got minus 12.5 uh, times by S on the right-hand side. So we just divide this side by this side. Um, so distance equals uh, minus 400 over minus 12.5, uh, which is equal to 32 for this question. So that's how you get your full marks for a question like this. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you want more exam technique tips and sort of exam question walkthroughs, please have a look at the playlist on the screen or check out my other videos for more GCSE physics content.